Sound test, sound test looks to be good. Welcome, welcome everybody. Hello, welcome to this live. My name is Vlad. I'll be your captain today on this flight across the French Alps on the beautiful Piper Seneca. I hope you guys are feeling good. Uh, we're here on the ground in Chambery. Sorry a little bit for the delay, uh, but uh, I've been trying to prepare myself for this flight for the past hour and I still feel like I'm slightly late. So yeah, anyways, today should be fun. Today is going to be one of those uh, streams, uh, kind of like what we did in the Caribbean, but uh, a little bit different. We don't have such a fast aircraft, but doesn't mean that it's not as fun as the other one. And we are seated here in Chambery, and we're going to have a total amount of one, two, and three stops. And wow, just <laughs> that was a nice shot, just as that. As that 737 took off and a diamond uh, that looks like a diamond 40 taxing behind us really really cool also you might have noticed the cirrus uh, on our left that's emil he's going to be flying with us and mike should be coming too uh, very soon so speaking about the aircraft this is the piper seneca 2 at uh, the pa 34 200 turbo version from the captain iceman series and also, uh, shout out Chris, hello, uh, welcome to the stream, Shay TP, uh, <clears throat> welcome guys to the stream. And Captain Iceman, maybe maybe he's going to come to us a little bit later, uh, he's doing uh, an update to the website uh, to, uh, to include all the liveries that the community has been doing which is uh, really really cool i did myself three liveries or four liveries i can't remember anymore but uh yeah he's gonna go and put those liveries to um to the public uh, on the website so including this one which is not publicly available yet anyways this is the piper seneca as i just told you and it is one of the aircrafts i was uh, looking for uh, because i really wanted to have a twin uh, GA aircraft for X-Plane 12, which would be uh, good to hand fly and uh, a good aircraft to train single engine operations too, because, uh, well, for example, I've, I have the rep for the Cirrus, just as Emil has there on my left, but I was missing the, uh, the second engine, uh, something a little bit more fun. And then came along the uh, Piper Seneca, I checked it out and it was pretty much spot on. I was thinking about the Baron with the Reality Expansion Pack 2, uh, the laminar one, but this one fix, fits perfectly and I really, really love the texturing work and all that stuff. We're going to check a little bit uh, of that on the cruise as well. This is one of the liveries created by a Discord member and I really love this. I know it's probably not the best place to be flying this livery, uh, this is, this could be, I mean, this colors is like Caribbean stuff, but at the same time, like green and brown mountains kind of feels good. So I decided to take this one. Uh, oh, Chris, you are a cloud, uh, cloud swimmer. All right, now, now I kind of uh, got all my points together. <clears throat> so yeah, this, this stream here, I want you guys to, sh I mean, I want to show you uh, this uh, Piper Seneca as well, because it's a really cool aircraft and it might be something that you uh, are searching for, but um, but you didn't know about it. Um, so yeah, anyways, enough talking. Uh, let's go and start with a couple of stuff. First of all, this aircraft supports a very basic walk around, uh, which is really, really cool. So we can come here and we can remove the pitot tub uh, cover. We can remove the chocks, which uh, at this moment they both remove at the same time, and the engine covers, which as you can see, we can remove too. So that's really cool. More stuff is going to come, uh, like engine, uh, engine uh, oil monitoring. So we will have to refill the engine oil and check the engine oil, and that's pretty cool. So you could do yourself a little bit of a uh, walk around here just to uh, make sure that everything is good. Uh, the texturing is amazing and uh, really nice. All the doors work and operate, which is great. And I have my own idea here. 
By the way, check this out. The interior is painted on this livery and it looks sick. I really like how it looks. It's a nice, nice blue stuff. And by the way, check this out. Iceman <laughs> and IDIF company. Cool Mint. This is... <laughs> coughing 300 milligrams that that probably is um it, i mean that's definitely an aviation drink can we touch it oh nothing as refreshing as iceland cool mint full of caffeine for a long flight very relaxing and now let's hear some good news All right, I'm not going to go with the music. I'm not sure it's copyrighted or not, but I didn't know. I just discovered this right now. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's why I stopped. All right, um, so we're going to close the passenger door for the moment. So you close it here with this um, very car-like uh, switch, and then you have to latch it. And then I'm going to go on the other side, and I'm going to come in uh, from our side to the cockpit and have a little seat so i'll leave the door open for now the cockpit is really nicely modeled i really love the texturing work and i love the paint that uh the guy did with this livery um really really nice i really like i'm gonna already remove the yoke because well piper decided to mount the engine gadgets right down here and it's not very easy to see them with the yoke so i just fly without it um also cool thing if you remove the uh, the the one on the <clears throat> uh, pilot side the other one still um uh, still keeps being visible so that's really cool all right, and now I need to situate myself. So we're going to be flying VFR the whole time. Um, I'm not very familiar with the, with the uh, terrain anyways. And I'm just going to go and give a call to Emil on Discord uh, because I can't hear them now. Uh, hey, guys. Hey. Hello. Yo. Hello. So Mike and Emil say hello to everybody. I see Emil has already started the engine. Yep. Hello. Uh, cool. Hello. So... Uh, I, I, well, I finished the uh, first introduction and I'm going to start pr preparing myself um, and starting up. So if you guys want to go ahead and start, uh, I don't know, maybe taxi and stuff, you can go and uh, probably do in about like five to ten minutes. Okay. I'm not on the sim yet, so I'll have to load up the sim first. Okay. I just wanted to recharge the battery because it's, it was quite low, so yeah. All right, okay. That's the reason. I will wait. No problem. Good. I will switch off then the, the voice for now, so I won't hear okay. you guys. And then uh, if um, when I'll be ready to start the engines, I'll tell you. Right. Okay. And uh, remember, we have ATC. Oh, we have ATC. All right. Tower. Okay. Tower. Oh, we have Only tower. Time. Okay. Well, it's a VFR flight, so I don't think we need to submit a flight plan because every time I submit a VFR flight plan, it doesn't show up. So <clears throat> should be fine. Okay. Thank you. Cool, so looks like we have some ATC there, and that means we're going to have some um, some talking to do. Cooler, hello. Uh, welcome to the stream. So now I need to get my head around this stuff. And I'm going to start by showing you guys this fantastic... Oh, I didn't know you could customize this thing. Uh, this fantastic menu for the Piper Seneca. First of all, this airplane is customizable. You can use the metrical or imperial units. I'm going to use the metrical ones because, well, we are in Europe and everything is, is in metrical. Uh, you can refuel it by scrolling your mouse. Uh, very, very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more fuel here. Uh, 40.7 gallons on both sides. This looks to be good. O2 level. Well, because this aircraft is not pressurized, and in case we want to go above 10,000 feet for a prolonged period of time, we need to use our oxygen mask, which is right here. And you can click on it, and then you're going to wear your oxygen mask. That's very cool. Uh, finally, you can put baggage here on the front, on the back, and you can put passengers, uh, which is really, really great. 
uh, you have three types of avionics, G GNS430, uh, GTN750, and no GPS VOR only, which I was really thinking about using on this flight. But because I am not very familiar with the uh, terrain, just as I told you, uh, I'm going to use the GNS430 uh, to make sure that we at least get uh, to the right place. But most of the flight is going to be done uh, as much visually as possible and also we will not be using any autopilot even though this aircraft has it so it's going to be a full manual flight uh, stream that's really really cool and i uh, encourage you guys to try it out too anyways so we're going to have three legs today uh, we're going to start from chambery and let me show you uh everything that i have here uh, i need to yeah, exactly. So we're gonna we we are here in Chambery, which is Lima Foxtrot Lima Bravo. Uh, we're gonna fly the first leg, which is only 28 miles here to Grenoble. Um, we're gonna assume that I don't know, maybe we are doing some checkup or some stuff that our company is here, and we need to uh, fly our empty plane here to Grenoble, where we have a couple of uh, tourists, uh, full plane of tourists, let's say, uh, that we're gonna be taking to uh, Courchevel, the famous airport. Uh, LT port, I don't know, whatever. Um, and we're going to do something like this. I am using another airport as fixes to make sure that we're going to be flying in the correct place. And I'll be using just the uh, sky vector chart here with the mountains to make sure we get to the correct place. Uh, I too already have all the charts that we need here for the airports. This is from the AIP France. And for some reason, I don't know, I couldn't find. Uh, charts for Courchevel on AIP France so these ones were the available online and they look fairly realistic at least according to a video that I saw so we're going to be briefing through these charts this is really cool visual pro chart uh, with, with some uh, some really good information here and the, the airport chart of course but that will come later the first leg is going to be fairly easy uh, but we're going to be doing a couple of uh, first uh, flight tests and then get going and then get the rhythm because at this moment I feel like I am a little bit slow. <clears throat> and finally we're going to be going to La Mole which is Saint Tropez from Courchevel which is the longest leg which will probably have around 150 miles uh, but uh, we also might even try to fly above the mountains or higher than 10,000 feet uh, to test the oxygen uh, mask to see how is it working and because I never tested it and it's it's uh, it's interesting so yeah first flight is gonna be real simple I anticipate uh, well we're gonna do the, the departure briefing once we start the engines because they take a little bit of time to warm up and we need to warm up the engines before before uh, doing our uh, magnetos check our propeller check and all that stuff uh, you guys know that yeah they need to be warmed up so this is the plan we have one two and finally three legs all the way down here to saint tropez which is a very interesting airport as well and yeah let's let's not spend any more time oh just just to say the weather has been beautiful 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 clear skies almost no clouds uh, light wind this is just fantastic and it's real time the only thing that's not real time is well the time itself I've pulled the time two hours early so that uh, we can get some sunlight in our entire flight because I'm not, as I told you, very familiar with terrain and even though sunset sounds really good, but it sounds really stressful too. Uh, Chris, Torque Seymour Laminar Series. Laminar with Reality Expansion Package. I know the Torque Sim is amazing, uh, but it's just too expensive for me uh, you probably know I'm going through ATP on that's very expensive so even though I spend some money on the simulator I try to spend as little as possible okay so <clears throat> fuel is on we're gonna fly the empty plane so that's just my weight right there I can close the stuff I'm gonna go ahead and close the door here then I have to press here and then I have to latch the door uh, I'm going to open this window here so that the aircraft doesn't get very hot. We have this beautiful uh, sunshade, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later as we're going to hit our longest uh, leg on the cruise. But for now, I just want to get going. So the fuel is good. Um, I'm going to start 
by doing a cockpit preparation. So pre-flight inspection is completed and I'm using, by the way, the checklists uh, that are provided with this aircraft because this aircraft is provided with the pilots operating uh, hand... Uh, no, wait. POH, yeah, pilots operating handbook, all the checklists, uh, normal procedures, very good description, power tables, all that stuff. So um, almost like the real thing, or I should just say like the real thing. So that's really, really good. You can come to this aircraft and just uh, experience it to the maximum. The only limitation for me is I only have one throttle axis, so I won't be able to do some of the procedures exactly as they should be done in real life when you have two hands and you can move them freely real quick. Uh, here I am limited to the mouse and keyboard, uh, but I'll try to do my best anyways. Uh, so I'm going to be using the abbreviated checklist for the Piper and I will have the normal procedures open here on my screen. Uh, to make sure I won't forget anything. Just in case. Just just so in case. <clears throat> Alright. So, let's go with the cockpit preparation checklist. So, the pre-flight inspection is completed. We have removed all outside items. And, guys, be careful because you can start the engines with the engine cover still plugged in. And then you will have a very fiery surprise. So, yeah, be careful with that. All the papers are on board. You guys signed up all the documents for the flight so that's cool all switches let's make sure that all switches are off yes they are that's all good and we can go with the battery on so we have good battery just make sure that everything is good here Jerry is there all right okay uh landing gear down three green is confirmed fuel quantity is confirmed two fuel selectors is on both which is checked both on so that's good and circuit breakers they are not simulated yet what they do is they can customize your aircraft even more like for example they can remove some of the anti-ice features or the heated plate on your windscreen so that's really cool but we're gonna maintain I, I like how it looks so we're gonna maintain all that stuff circuit brakes are checked emergency gear lever it's down here it's checked and good oxygen checked we saw that the bottle is filled and we have our mask there we did a couple of breaths that's fine parking brake is set the cockpit preparation checklist is complete so I'm gonna go ahead start the avionics and because we have uh, well we have ATC uh, we're gonna have to contact for engine start so bonjour this is I'm just reading through the ATIS this is a uh, channel information hotel recorded at 16 Zulu expect RNP whatever departing runway 18 SID circling 36 on request transition level 60 uh, wind is 350 at 4, ceiling and visibility go 24 on the temperature, QNH 1015, let's do it already. 1015, <clears throat> set QNH on first contact, 80s hotel is received. So that's very good. I love this avionics, guys, by the way. Uh, really, really cool. Love it. Um, the, the aircraft I fly, which is the Technam, I think it's kind of similar to this. Uh, in my flight school, so it's really, really nice. Love the digits. All right, 118.3. So, ML is still here. And we are November 861 Papa Alpha. We are on the general aviation apron. And... Yeah, whatever they are speaking. Yeah. When I see Turkish, I think USA Desert, Southwest American Indian, very clearly, absolutely. This is one of the, the most amazing uh, liveries that I, I saw there. You can also check the O2 amount at the bottle gauge. Oh, wow, really? Oh my god, yes! Wow, okay, I, I, I love this aircraft even more now. This is great. All right, so let's find... Uh, this is one thing that I really don't find funny about the French. Uh, oh, here's Mike, by the way. Uh, which is, they speak French on the... Uh, 
on the frequency and you understand nothing and you really lose some situational awareness uh, right there because of that so mm, not really cool 118.3 oh by the way wasn't i using nav all right no perfect com one and com and this com yeah com two is here perfect so uh i can use this com instead of the garmin one which is very annoying to use so that's good all right let's give him a call uh all right so we will be flying to grenoble first flight is going to be done at an altitude at least that i'm planning off is going to be six and a half thousand feet so let me write that down and let's give him a call Chamber Tower, uh, hello, November 861, Papa Alpha at the General Aviation Apron with information hotel. Would like to request uh, clearance for a VFR flight to Lima Foxtrot, Lima Sierra. November 861, Papa Alpha, Chamber Tower, good afternoon. I do not have a flight plan, so can you check? Or I can fill it for you, but it will take something like five minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, November 861 Papa Alpha. Well, every time we submit a VFR flight plan, it doesn't appear. So could we just uh, assume a direct to or we really need to submit the flight plan? Uh, 6861 Papa, I'll fit it for you. I'll call you back. Roger. And uh, request to start the engines to, uh, for warm up uh, November 861 Papa. Uh, November Papa Alpha, QNH 1025, start up approved. 1025 start up approved November 8 Papa Alpha. Excellent. So that's very, very good. Uh, we are clear to start the engine, so that's perfect. And I'm going to switch off the avionics for now before start. Uh, checklist, parking brake is set, call flaps are open right down here. Alternate air is off, which is right here. Uh, prop levers are full forward. Yes, they are. Beacon, let's go ahead here and fan light on uh beacon light is on magnetos are coming on now let me close this window it's being a little bit annoying now what i'm gonna do is you need to advance your mixture lever as you're gonna start the engines but because well just as i told you i'm limited to the mouse and keyboard i'm gonna do it the other way so throttles forward i'm gonna give a five second priming or three to four second priming on each engine confirm the fuel flow there right here and now i'm gonna make sure that we have one aircraft on the left clear on the front clear on the right clear prop and we're gonna start number two first one thing i forgot to do though is put the alternators to on that's part of the normal procedures and let's go let's watch for the oil pressure oil pressure is good fantastic let's go to a thousand rpm about here yeah that's a thousand rpm perfect let's go start number one make sure we monitor the oil oil is good and there we go let's put 1000 rpm now the rpms are not synced why let's go to idle once All right, this seem to be synced now. This is good. 1000 RPM. Go back with the avionics. Nav lights on. And our alternators are working, so that's good. Everything looks to be good. After start, oil pressure checked. Alternators on, avionics on. Good. 7000 is set. Let's go transponder to on. And yeah. Cooler, do you fly on mouse or do you mean you only have a throttle controller? Uh, no, I have I have a joystick. I have it. 
It's just that I only have. have been I only have one um, uh, one throttle axis, so I cannot uh, click and move something else at the same time. So, for example, on the starter, you hit the starter and you have to move your mixture forward. That's something I cannot do because I'm already clicking on the starter. So, yeah, uh, that's basically it. All right, good. We have the engine started. I'm gonna go here to the Garmin. I'm gonna pop this out. Flight plan, and I'll just uh, right here. L. L. Lima Sierra. And uh, so say again the uh, departure for uh, November 8 Pap Alpha. Uh, November 861 Pap Alpha, it is the Sierra Whiskey exit. Sierra Whiskey. Alright, clear to the destination via the Sierra Whiskey. Oh, sorry. Via the Sierra Whiskey departure and taxi on ready by Charlie and. Uh, Sierra November 1 to runway 18, uh, November 8, uh, Alpha. Correct. Alright, good. So we are Sierra November 1, November 218. Okay, that's good. And now I have to find the charts for the VFR. Stuff which is a little bit annoying. Um, because I don't have those. Um, there is a source of a VFR uh, charts. Open charts. I think that's how it is. Yep, I think that's it. No. <laughs> got this uh, and cooler saying, yeah, I got the side deck because it had proper mixture. Yeah, well, see, I don't have those. Well, this is a really annoying thing because on the AI. Are you able? I forgot to ask. Are you able from Charlie intersection 1,280 meters of runway? Hey, for November Charles Delta. Thank you. So call ready for departure. We'll call ready for departure. November Charles Delta. Because I'm not finding any. So let's see. Let me try to ask Emil. Maybe the you know, Emil. Uh, Emil and Mike. Hey, wait. W um, what's the departure he gave you? No departure. No departure. He gave me a departure, like via Sierra Whiskey or Southwest. Ah, I mean exit, exit, exit. What do you mean? Like tax uh, on the taxi. Ah! Oh my God, I'm so dumb. Okay, never mind. Uh, can yeah, I, I thought that was a VFR departure. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. Well, then I'm ready for taxi, basically. Um, so I right. Yeah, you're gonna go first, then, and I'll go after okay. you. Roger. Good luck. All right. I think I'm all is gone already. Oh no! Wait. Where is ML? Oh, he's there. All right. Charlie Delta, wind is three five zero degrees. Four knots runway one eight. Clear takeoff. Proceed direct Sierra Whiskey after takeoff. All right, let's go on. Sun. Proceeding to Sierra Whiskey number Charlie Delta. Let's take off. Let's go. Vendredi là, en faux trafic, un Cirrus 22 au départ depuis l'intersection. Let's do before tax checklist. Annonciator checked. 
Press for test. Let's test. Avionics are set. Altimeters QNH 1025 is set. Flight controls. Let's do a quick flight control check. So, left. All right. Neutral on the back. Can we see the back? Uh, kinda, yeah. All right, this looks good. November 8, Papa Alpha is gonna start taxing now. Roger, thank you. All right, brakes are released and trims is set. Flaps, no flaps. Briefing, that's it. Climbing to 6,500. Clear on left, clear on right. Do a brake check. Let's go. Yeah, Crochevel is gonna be funny. On adding some power. That's out of I have birds of an elk guarding to the Cirrus uh, on your right. You can taxi into the section Charlie, runway 18 via Sierra, November 1. There's the Cirrus of ML. Where am I taxi to holding uh, point Charlie runway 18 via Sierra number 1, bird 7? Alright, let's go. Clear left, clear right. Make sure the instruments work. So, HSI is working left and right. Turn coordinator is working good. Standby is good. Let's turn here. We still have to complete the run up checklist or the run up checks, however, you might want to call it. Adding um, Michelle, Delta, uh, bond pass, feet and crossing to Sierra Woodski. Remember Charlie Delta, thank you. Call one minute Sierra Whiskey. Go up Sierra Whiskey and Michelle Delta. Fox November Lima, le vent 350 degrés 4 nœuds, autorisé toucher piste 18 gauche, rappelez vent arrière main gauche avec les intentions. Oh, there's a, another one. On rappelle vent arrière main gauche avec les intentions, Fox November Lima. Check something here. Ah, there's the point. All right, that's the point we want to go. Okay. Sierra Whiskey Point. Thank God for the X-Plane maps. Hello, Michelle Delta passing over Sierra Whiskey. November 234, Charlie Delta. Unfortunately, nothing further. Squawk 7000. It's PZCOM 122, decimal 8. Thank you for coming to Chambéry. Bye bye. Do I have the. Uh... Squawking 7000 and thank you for service goodbye. Uh, Special clinic on November 23. Yeah, brakes work nicely. Let's stop here in a second. So, our departure, clear on left, clear on right, our departure is gonna be done with uh, laps up. That's the normal departure on the Seneca. With the short field, you take off with flaps 25. But we're gonna have a normal departure. All right, let's stop here. Set the parking brakes, switch the lights off. Eight six one Papa Alpha, ready for departure. Eight six Papa Alpha, negative. Uh, doing some uh, before takeoff checks. Uh, two minutes. Roger, report ready. We'll go November eight Papa Alpha. All right, let's do some uh, checks now. I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna open the. Uh, the normal procedures because you have three different checks. So, throttle controls 1900 RPM. Let's go. Actually, never mind. Wait, engine run up in the checklist. Stupid me. 
Engine run up checklist. The parking brake is set. Engine instruments are within the limits. Oil temperature is on the green, which is good. And oil pressure is good too. Fuel selectors, both cross feed set. And now propeller, 1500 RPM. Check the feather. Oh, that's a good. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. All right, the other one is good. Now, governor at 1900. 1900. Now we just need to make sure that the props move. All right. This is working. Alternate air check. Everything looks pretty good. Magnetos. This is the easy one. There's the drop. There's the recover. There's the drop. There's the recover. It was below 150. The other one. It's good. I mean, below. Yeah, 150, and the difference was below 50. Rico, good check on the magnetos. Gyro pressure is good. Alternator output is good. Ice protection, we're not gonna check that. Throttle, let's go to idle. Throttle, idle, everything working good. Back to 1000 RPM. And fuel selectors both to on. Engine run-up checklist set completed. Correction and before takeoff, flaps are up. Let's do transponder alt. Lights and strobes. Let's go on. And transponder set HSI. Check with the heading. Pitot heat off. Mixture is good. Right. There's the guy. He's doing circuits. That's really cool. November 8, Papa Alpha, ready for departure. November 8, Papa Alpha, from Charlie, line up and wait, runway 18. From Charlie, line up and wait, runway 18. November 8, Charlie. Uh, November 8, Papa Alpha. Alright, clear left, we have one aircraft there. Clear on the right, final is good. Temperatures are looking good. So far, is good. It's going to line up, check that our HSI heading is good with the runway. Ah, okay, well, the lineup could be better. Let's stop. November 8, Papa Alpha, wind is 350 degrees, 3 knots, runway 18, clear for takeoff, after takeoff, proceed direct to Sierra Whiskey. Lift takeoff, runway 18, and after takeoff, proceed direct to Sierra Whiskey, November 8, Papa Alpha. Alright, let's go the other light, rest is good, responder is good, let's go. Standing by on the brakes, let's have some fun guys, spin the props to the limit and now apply manifold pressure let's go to 39 we really don't need much more than that power is set airspeed's alive these and p's are looking good 73 rotate slowly and we are off positive climb gear up Sierra Whiskey was on the right. Uh, above 100 knots. Keep ourselves in the climb. I'm going to reduce the manifold pressure to 35. And I'm going to reduce the props to 2400. Trim the aircraft properly to 100 knots. Lights are off. 
really nicely. Remember, guys, we don't have a. Report one minute, uh, zero whiskey, November 8th, Papa Alpha. Alright, zero whiskey is right here. Yep. So we're gonna be climbing nicely. Calling flats are gonna maintain open for the moment. Have to take off gear. Up, no lights. Flaps up, power set, altimeters. 1025 set, lights are off. Let's take off checklist complete. You don't need to tap the brakes before we gear up in this. Uh, oh, that's a good question. No idea. November 8th, Papa Alpha, 1 minute to zero whiskey. November 8th, Papa Alpha, thank you. Squawk 7000, you're leaving my space no further. ATC, Manitou Unicom, 122 decimal 8, bye bye. Squawk 7000 and 122 decimal 8, thanks for your service, bye. November 8th, Papa Alpha. Alright, switch to the Unicom and we are free. Zane Westy, Westy, Westy. Sorry. Hello, welcome to the stream. Love you, sir. Thank you very much. That's uh, that's very nice to hear. Right here's CR Whiskey, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the GPS, hit flight plan, hit direct, enter. Now the needle is gonna be synced. 4,000 feet on the climb out, looking good. Man, it's climbing like a rocket. Yeah. Perfect. Sierra Whiskey. Excellent. After all, X Plane maps are not bad. Right message there inside airspace. That looks good to me. So far, so good. So six and a half thousand, that's what we wanted. Let me do another direct. And now I'm gonna follow the HSI. Now we're gonna fly away from the mountains now because, uh, well, Alps uh, are on our back, but that's okay. We're gonna come back to them. And we have only 23 miles to go. So I'm not gonna uh, even climb. You know what? I'm gonna maintain five and a half thousand. Very short fly, no need to get higher. Save some fuel there. We reduce the manifold pressure to 31 and a half, which is the base cruise. Manifold pressure and start reducing the props to 2300. Level off. Trim the aircraft. Now, because this is a short flight, I'm not going to be do going through the, um, the cruise tables gonna check the cruise tables once we get to Saint Tropez we're gonna have enough time at this moment I'm gonna just stream the aircraft and just hand fly it just get used to it a little bit more 20 miles to go beautiful now let's say it's a little bit loud so we can plug in our headset and get silent really cool so at this moment I'm just chilling, power is set, all is good, can I lean the engines a bit more? Yes I can, just a little bit more, I could reduce the manifold pressure a little bit more to 26, which is I think the most economic one. And just stream the aircraft, flying nicely, following the needle. Big 
check here. 6,045. 28. Okay, let's go with 28. Yeah, that's about it. Reduced props to 22. Good. Here we go. Maintain the altitude within 100 feet. That's all good. And now just fly direct. Okay, so. Oh, you can call flaps up now. Idiotor Lambert. Yes, I can. But so far, the cylinder head temperature is not that bad, so I will about half them. Let's get that lost altitude. Really like the muffle. Bird 7 is there. There's Emil. Emil has already arrived. QNH1026 in Grenoble. Got some uh, thermal there. 1026, let's change to 1026, that is set. And what was the wind? Wind light and variable, so we can just go direct and land from any direction, which is really good. It'd be cool when you put the phones on your on you. Still had some very low frequencies coming through to simulate haptic feedback. Well, for us users, that is. Uh, yeah, which is that was a thermal. Let's fly without it a bit. Let's get back to our altitude. This is gonna be funny because uh, X plane simulates quite well the uh, air masses movements because of the terrain, and so. The airplane going up and down, it means I still haven't trimmed it very well. And it means we are going through some rough air. Kind of rough air, because it's not really turbulent. Uh, no, here. About halfway. Five minutes to go. Very short flight. That's a big tower. See Seneca the best, absolutely. Captain Iceman. And I love this livery too. Oh, by the way, notice one thing. Because we are flying the empty plane, we have no passengers in the back. But once we get all the passengers in uh, Grenoble now, we will have uh, 3D model of them sitting there. Alright, I've been flying with no hands on the yoke for the past 30 seconds or more. So far I like how the <laughs> how it is stable. That's the runway by the way. So we could start slowly turning a little bit more here to the left and going into a slow and shallow descent. I'm going to add a bit of mixture Reduce the power. And start our descent. Between the aircraft, that was a bit too much out. That's good, right there. Love the scenery. This is Orto 4XP and Alps Photoreal from Flyaway Simulations. I've put the links on the description below, so if you guys want to check that out, that's all free scenery for you. So no P-factor due to counter-rotating props. Uh, P-factor. Okay, I'm kind of lost there. What do you mean? You mean like the aircraft rolls? Yes, the aircraft rolls, because I've been aileron trimming it very easily, uh, very slowly. Ah, wait, never mind, Jesus. Counter-rotating engines, oh my god. 
What a mess. <laughs> Anyways, I got it all wrong. I mean, I got it right, but wrong. No critical engine either. Cool. That's very cool. Right, I'm doing a nice descent now because I feel like we are a little bit high. To catch up with it. That's fine, we're flying empty. And elevation is 1,300 feet. Let's slow down. Let's make sure we're forward. I'm gonna put the lights on just because I won't have free hands to do it later. Let's keep around between minus 1,000 and minus 1,500. Nobody on the approach. Yep. Yeah, I, I see. Now I got it. I got it. My mind went through all the ATPL books <laughs> in like 10 seconds, and I, uh, yeah, still didn't get it. Right, call flaps open. The gear limit is 129, so we could go, let's go gear down, flaps 10. The flaps sing on this one, which is really funny, but I like the sound. You know that sound that the uh, A320 family does when overflying you? Because of the fuel, uh, of the fuel uh, vents, yeah, this kind of remembers me that one. All right, 100 knots. Let's go for flaps 25. I see one red, so we're not that bad. Let's go props full forward and flaps 40, 90 knots, that's what I want, minus 500 and 90 knots, no bad, not bad, gear is down, flaps are set, props are a good mixture, full forward, good to land. Add a bit more speed there. Yep, that's better. Runway two seven it is. And that's the touchdown. Flaps up. I could have braked here. I want to exit on the next one. Actually, the Emil is right there, so we're gonna vacate on the right to join him. I must tell you guys that I didn't brief the airfield here in Grenoble. <laughs> Alright, one of the lights off. Wing. Uh, strobe lights off, transponder to on. This is good. This is fine. Let's go across the line there and report. Trainable traffic November 861, Papa Alpha running to 7 vacated. Lima 
So one thing I'll do, I will not be stopping the land, I'll just let it go and make it record all the flights we're going to be doing. So this way we can uh, monitor the progress of how is everything going. Alright, so after landing, half flaps, open flaps, uh, pitot heat, half flight strobe, soft transponder, on and cabin heat if on to fan. No, we didn't touch that. All right, there is ML. I'm gonna stop right here near this blue hangar or near this whitish garage. I'm gonna imagine that this is um, this is some FPO or whatever, some mini terminal for the local passengers. Don't clip the wing on the hangar, and we're gonna stop here. Set the parking brake, perfect. Lights are off, nav lights off. Leave the rest. And we're gonna switch off the transponder, switch off the avionics, and cut the engines. Magneto's off. This goes to off, and the battery can go to off. Good. Parking, parking brake checks complete. Carving heat off, avionics off, make sure cut off, magnetos off, all other switches off, battery alternator off, pocket check is complete. Good. So, welcome to the first stop. I need to go very quickly into Volanta and say cancel, don't stop here. Landing was minus 19. I'm not joking. I can show you guys. Landing was minus 19. Um, here you go. And here you go. So, I'm not lying. <laughs> so far, so good. Probably not the very best altitude uh, fix there, but yeah, I got the landing right on this one. Perfect. So, Bird 7 is here, it's coming to land, and Volant is going to be running. While we do that, uh, while he does that, should I say, we are going to go and we're going to open here our passenger doors. Stop. Oh my god, it blocked. Stop it! This is some explained stuff. For some reason, it blocks the mouse sometimes. And uh, yeah, I need to unlatch the door and open it. And we're going to put a full plane of passengers plus uh, a little bit of cargo. Let's do 50 pounds. Should be good. Yeah, it was a butter. Was the hot plate in this era of the Seneca standard or a factory option? No idea. That's a good question to Captain Iceman. Fuel, 37.5, 37.5. So we spent only six gallons about that. Six gallons, not bad. Um, I'm going to add a bit more again. So let's go with 41.5, 41.5. Yeah, this should be good. So we've loaded our airplane. Now I am going to go switch the battery on. There's Emil, where's Mike? Oh, Mike is, is texting. Uh, should be right here. All right, good. Um, very nice. Let's go battery on. Avionics switch on. Let's go here to the flight plan. So now we go to uh, we go to Chambéry, which is the most interesting part for you guys. And for the passengers as well, because it's going to be a very scenic flight. Um, and so I'm using these two airports as fixes to make uh, sure that I don't screw this up. So let's go hit, uh, insert Lima Foxtrot. My mouse wheel is a little bit screwed. Uh, can I go? Yes. All right. I thought that was a controller. All right. L F O. What was the first one? Lima Golf. Lima, 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 Lima. Golf. Lever sound. Yep, that's correct. Enter this one, except now we're going to go with the next one, which is. I need to open the window again. 
Kilo Alpha, so Lima, Foxtrot, Kilo, should be easy this one, Kilo Alpha, Albertville, yep, and finally Lima Foxtrot, Lima Juliet, uh, did I miss it? No. I still feel a little bit tired from work, so I'm sorry if I am doing some dumb stuff sometimes. All right, Kershevel, we're going to accept that. The rest is good. Message is fine. And wait, no, clear. Flight plan. I'll just hit the uh, clear button, and this is what I wanted. Good. Now, can I make this track up? Yes. Perfect. And yeah, the range is here. Dummy me. It's a long time since I didn't fly the 430. I would prefer this to be a VR, be a lot more simple. Okay, this is good. So Avianics off. Let's go close everything. Passengers are boarded. We would have given them a uh, security briefing. Door is closed and latched. Here we need to close here and latch. Good. ML is gone, I think. So battery is good. Alternators on. Let's go with the beacon light on. Mixture full forward. Call flaps are open. Travel a little bit forward. Do a bit of priming, guys. See the fuel flow. Fuel flow is good. Magnetos on. Do a quick before start checklist. Parking brake is set, just make sure that the fuel is good as well. Yep, cal flaps open, alternate air off, prop levers full forward, beacon on, magnetos on. Good, let's start. Clear prop, and starting two. Yeah, clear there. All pressure is good, alternator is working, we have good power. Let's go to 1000 RPM, there we go. Well, that was a bit too much. And starting one. All oh, pressure is good. Fantastic. Let me just pull them to idle once. And then back to 1000 RPM. Nav lights on. Avionics on. GPS is good. The rest is good. Can I just declutter this? There we go. That's better. All right. Good. QNH is good. After start, pressure is good. Alternates are working. Avionics is on. After start, complete. Before taxi, enunciator, do a quick test. Avionics check. Altimeter set. Flight controls should be good. Yep, they are. I see the shadow layer moving, so that's good. Uh, trims. Yeah, should be set for takeoff, this one. And it is. Flaps are up. Make sure that they are briefings. So, for the briefing on this one. Uh, now, I should have done this before, but anyways. So, we have a latent variable wind. I can close this chart because we won't be going back to uh, Chambery. So, we are here in this hangar. We taxi by November 6th. Uh, my suggestion would be to go to November 6th again and depart this way because the runway is long enough and we can surely depart from there. Um, so this way we're going to be departing runway 09. We're going to climb to at least 7,000 feet. And why is that? Because the charts for Chambéry, our arrival starts at 7,000. If I recall correctly. Yeah, exactly. See here, 7,000. So at least 7,000. We do a bit of an overfly. We have here the Whiskey Point. We overfly to the Lima Point. And then we overfly the airfield to do a visual inspection of the runway, make sure that everything is good. And then as we overfly the runway, we maintain approximately this heading here to this Bozell town, which is the Norton or November point at 7000. Then we turn right to Echo point, which is basically the mountain, then line up ourselves to the runway. I wrote myself the threshold here at runway 22 is at around 6,250 feet. So we're going to have about 800 feet to lose there. So it will give us time to uh, slow down, configure, and yeah. 
don't expect a uh, a butter from that landing. So that's basically the brief. Uh, let's let's go. Taxi lights run, brakes released, brakes check, brakes are good. Now my question is, where is Emil? Emil has gone, and I don't know where is Mike though. So we're gonna go. There's November 6. There is nobody else on the approach. Let's go with transponder to alt already. Clear left. I won't be doing the uh, run up checklist on this one. Uh, I mean, yeah, very quick one. Emil is gone, I'm what remains. <laughs> Welcome back. That was a long time since you've written the comments, so I appreciate that. All right, let's go put this to idle. And let's stop here. Brakes the set, lights off. Throttles to a thousand RPM. Now fuel goes here to the crossfade. And let's do engine instruments are all in the limits. Fuel selectors in, in crossfade. Propeller, let's go to 1500 RPM for the feather test. Checking left one works, right one works perfect. Now the governor to 1900 RPM. All right, and now check the magnetos. There's a decrease. Recover, decrease, recover, less than 150 on the other one. Perfect, let's go. Idle power, make sure nothing closes. I forgot, uh, nothing shuts down, I mean. Forgot the alternator out with any charge pressure. That's alright, let's go back to 1000 RPM. Charger is good though. Fuel to on. That's coming on. All right, and we are clear on the left, clear on the right, right there. Let's go. And over the burning runway zero nine. A bit of outside view. Yeah, see the passengers there. That's really cool. Before takeoff flap slides, strobes, transponder, HSI pedo, and mixtures. Good. Turn coordinator was working. HSI. Yep. Let's do a better job lining up this time. Now the scenic flight begins, and I need to open my sky vector so I can monitor. Good, let's stop here, apply the power, spin the props, and now we can go to the manifold pressure. About 39 should be good enough. Just don't over torque it. Airspeed's alight, TCPs are good. And rotate. Positive climb, you're up. Reduce the manifold pressure. And reduce the props. 24. Let's go to 100, which is going to be our climb power. Uh, correction, climb out. Uh, 
climb speed, lights are off. And I need to turn right a little bit. Excellent. Very good. After takeoff, gear flaps, power, altimeter, lights. Checked. So we're gonna go in the middle of these two mountains and then we're gonna fly left into the valley and finally we're gonna turn right inbound Courchevel. Ah, fantastic. Alright, good on the climb out. Above 2000 already. Actually, never mind, I'm wrong. I just checked now. We need to follow the roads. And the roads go right. No. Never mind, I was correct. <laughs> Jesus. Being tired is not funny. Anyways, let's just, just monitor. Everything looks good. Cylinder head is good. Oops, are good. I'm gonna lean the engines just a little bit. There is no fuel in Courchevel, so of course we will need to account the next flight, and that's why that's exactly why I wanted to take a little bit of extra fuel. Just request our counter for engines and maintenance. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, by the way, does, does this our counter works? This would be very nice. Light Vision, hello, welcome to the stream. Interesting flight. Yes, it is. It's a little bit different. Not the most prepared flight, but definitely interesting. And we're going to start with the best part right now, which are which is the panoramic uh, or the scenic scenery. <laughs> when you hear the pilot say, oh, wait, I was wrong, and you're about to fly into the Alps. Yeah, well, I told you guys that I was very... Uh, familiar with the scenery so and we're not gonna crash into a mountain but I don't know all tips and tricks uh, of the scenery if I could be if I would do like maybe two or three flights before on this place and memorize a lot of the stuff a lot of the uh, visual uh, routes that they could be doing like how to fly visually from for example Grenoble to Courchevel. I am 100% sure that it's super easy, but I never done it, so that's why I told you that I'm not prepared in that way. Let me reduce the props a bit more to 2300. Four and a half thousand. Looking good, a bit of turbulence there, but nothing significant. Yeah, we're flying the correct way. This is where we should go. Perfect. So, I was not wrong. <laughs> After all, I was not wrong. I was right, then I was wrong, and then I was right again. Beautiful view. I mean, I like how this livery looks, even with this scenery. And once we get into the mountains, which are gonna be a lot more brown than this part here, which is very green, uh, it is gonna be even better. Now, we don't see the pastures when we are inside, which is actually cool, I prefer that, but on the outside, we can see them. Look, he's definitely enjoying my flight. <laughs> uh, okay, she looks a little bit scared. Sorry, pastors, I scared you a little bit. Is it possible to put a bevel on the edges of those King avionics to reduce the shimmering? Uh, no idea what you're talking about, I'm sorry. But it's not that bad. And I think I have a plugin that does the, uh, the, good, the good shadows, so... That's me with the terrified look. <laughs> you know, actually it's very difficult to model uh, people that looks very realistic. It's very difficult to paint as well. 
All right, cylinder head temperatures, oil temperatures good, oil pressure is good, everything looks good so far. Fuel flow is good. So this airplane is pretty thirsty. See, they're spending almost 60 gallons per engine. And I just now noticed that we have the power percentage written right here, 55, 65, 75, and 90, and 100. Yeah, it's a discovery flight for me. All right, so what did we need? 7,000, right? At least 7,000. So I'm gonna maintain 7,500 um, just because we are VFR and you guys know VFR flights, we need to be on the uh, flight levels, but which are plus 500. There is ML. Looks like ML is doing some practice, maybe? I don't know. And let's check. QNH 1032 in Portugal. How about I set that already? 1032 is set. Very good. And we are at 7000 already. Let's maybe climb a bit higher to look above the mountains. Yeah, let's keep climbing. Power is good, RPM is good, everything is good. Passengers are enjoying the views. And I'm just trying to imagine right now this airplane, uh, when it came out first, first time, probably was so amazing to fly that time. Aviation definitely was a lot different. All right, there is seven and a half. Let's go to eight and a half. So far, I like what I'm doing, and that's a good, that's a good thing, definitely. How is the wind in Courchevel, by the way? Wind light of variable Q and H. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Let me see. Oh. Mike is gone, so Emil, you here? Yep. How's how's your flight going? I see you turn back. I landed in Lima Golf. Oh, I see. For practice, right? Because I'm very slow. Oh, he was in your flight plan. He said. No, that was one of the waypoints I told you. That was one of the waypoints I was using to plot the. Um, the routes. I just didn't use any waypoints. I used the the airfields okay. as waypoints. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm almost overflying the Lima Golf airfield. I am like uh, I'm four minutes in uh, until I get there. Uh, but I'll probably cut short. And there is eight and a half. Let's level off. That was. Yeah. So I'll probably land first, then in Courchevel, and then you'll catch up. How about, how about that? Let's see. Sounds good. I'm gonna watch your landing. I really want to see your landing because I never saw another airplane landing in Courchevel. Okay, you will see me slamming the aircraft. So. Oh, I will slam too. Don't worry. <laughs> I will slam it absolutely just as you. Uh, probably better than me. Yep. Okay. Not so I will sure. Wait on the ground. Okay. A little bit. To take over. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can take off already because um, I'm basically over the field. Almost. I mean, I'm very, very close. So. Uh, and you still need to climb quite a bit. So, you definitely want to climb, so, or at least start climbing. But I'll fly probably 55% then. Uh, yeah, no problem. I'm flying uh, economically too because uh, I'm saving fuel for the final flight as well. Oh, okay. I probably won't fly the, the last flight. Alright, okay, no problem. But I really want to fly to Kershawell for the first time. Yeah. Not the, not the last time. <laughs> Short fuel departure. Alright, I'm gonna switch off the sound then. Uh, yeah, good you luck. Have to keep it. it. Alright. And then, 
Well, then... Uh, oh, yeah, you're gonna switch off the mic. Perfect. I'm gonna keep it then, and then if you need to call me, just uh, call me for whatever reason. Alright, so we are about stables. I'm still trimming the airplane, as you can see. Because, you know, we're men. We can only do uh, one thing at a time, and because I was speaking with ammo, <laughs> I was struggling to maintain the airplane. So, still trimming it. Uh, lean the fuel, as you can see. Oh, uh, close the cowling flaps a bit. And we are gaining speed, which is good. The airplane is flying absolutely fantastically. A bit turbulent, just a bit. Uh, but that's okay. The Alps are looking very good. And yes, they are indeed. They weight about 40 gigabytes, but it's totally worth it, in my opinion. And the views are so good. Let's see if we can spot ML. ML is gonna be down there. Okay, I need to stop and check if we can spot ML. Is he flying already? Yeah, he took off. All right, so yep. yeah, all right, here he is. Nice, I can see you. And all this time I was not touching the controls, the airplane was still maintaining altitude. Yes. And I can see as well. It's very nice. I'm flying at 130 knots. 96 at the moment. Yeah, so far. That's good. And uh, you probably know that the mic is connected. My mic disconnected? No, no, not my, my mic. Ah, okay, my, okay, okay. Michael. I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Very good. One thing I forgot to do was to switch this thing here, and now we're fine. Alright, so now I continue through this valley until we almost hit the dead point. There will be a railroad, which is gonna go both ways and a river as well which is going to go both ways too on that point we're going to turn right inbound a valley another one and on the end of that valley is going to be Courchevel where are we going after Courchevel? we're going to go into Saint Tropez which is a little bit longer fight but we're going to be testing the oxygen feature on the Seneca because I never tested it I know the bottle is there I know the mask is there, but I never tested it, so it's one of the things we're going to be doing. And uh, and yeah, and there is a, a nice, a nice little airfield in Saint Tropez to go to. So yeah, just enjoy the uh, the stuff. One thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to silence a little bit the. Um, the engines here just so my uh my my brain relaxes a bit it would be cool if we could um i'm missing the word adjust the level of the silencing because this one is good but it's almost complete silence it's not complete silence but it's very close let me see if i open the window all right it's a little bit more but still very very silent so it would be cool if we could control that. Be a nice option. Look at this. I'm I'm not touching the controls. The airplane is flying by itself. Now I will do a little bit of forward push. Do one click of trim forward. Correct the ailerons with the ailerons a little bit. And hands off again. Let's let's uh, I'm going to do one more click on the trim. Let's appreciate a little bit the views. The views are amazing. And the external model of this aircraft with this fantastic livery once again. Look at that. We are flying a Seneca. And it's looking really good. Like, truly, really good. And did I spot something there? Oh no! 
One second, let me check something, guys, because I had a problem with some ortho photos. Yep, looks like I still have. <laughs> I still have one tile that it's flat. Oh boy. Yeah, alright. I need one more tile uh, to be fixed. Anyways, let's get back to the Seneca and appreciate. By the way, guys, see this? Still maintaining altitude? That was all the time. Hands off the yoke. All the time. Let's appreciate the views a bit more. Oh my god, this looks very cool. And I just see those roads down there. And I think, well, probably it's cool to drive on a good car with on those roads because it does feel very sporty. But at the same time, if your car is not very good, uh, it's not that funny. And probably not very funny going down as well because, uh, well, you're going to be using a lot of brakes. <laughs> Yeah, so far well, I... Can you accelerate a little bit? Because, um... You're catching up? Yep. You mighty serious. You mighty modern serious. Yes, of course, I will... I will, uh... Add a bit of power. The minimum setting is 55%. I cannot go... Yeah, I know, that's fine, that's fine. I will accelerate. I'll go 75% on mine. No problem. We're gonna accelerate. I'm doing so. You already climbed. Have you already climbed to the altitude? And what altitude are going to be climbing to? 8,000. 8,000, okay. Yeah, don't forget, we, we are VFR, so plus 500 usually is a good thing. Yeah, I'm ish, you're right, so 8,500. Check, okay, I'm at 8,500 too. I think you're below 8,500. Uh, no, I've set the Q&H at Courchevel already. Maybe that's because, uh, that's why. Okay, but I think we should have standard QNH for now. I don't. I'm not sure they will use standard QNH this uh, this close to the mountains. Let me check. Uh, so we need to trim it now. Uh, let me see. Yeah, transition altitude 5000, okay, yeah, I'll maintain anyways, but yeah, Grenoble has a transition altitude of 5000, so you are correct, but, but I don't know, because we are in the middle of the mountains, I kind of feel like we better maintain the other one, and because, you know, the Q&H in Courchevel is 1032, so the difference is, what, 32 minus 13? feet, probably. Yeah, so that's quite a lot. Yeah, but you're below, below me. I'm below you? Yep. Well, my QNH is correct. Ah, yes, of course, I'm below you, because uh, your, Q your QNH is gonna put your lower, or actually higher, than, than mine. Well, yeah, but I would prefer to be a little bit higher in the mountains. Uh, okay. That, that, that's on you. Yeah, I'll just keep it. I'll keep it. Alright, so we're approaching the next turning point, which the valley should be this one. Can I see the airfield? There's the airfield. And this is the valley for Courchevel, so my guess is I'm gonna start turning now. And uh, just, just check sky vector no never mind it's not this valley it's the next one yeah it's the next valley all right so keep flying break over a bit of altitude there i'm 140 plus knots now i'm 150. jesus that cirrus is bloody fast you can put 40 percent though on the power You can, you can do it. Well, 45 then. Uh, 
All right, so let's review the procedure into Courchevel. So we overfly the field, make sure the runway is good. And uh, then at 7,000, we turn left inbound that little city there or village. It's a village, yeah, Bozel. And then it's a right turn to Echo Point to, um, to line up with the runway. Lovely. Really good looking stuff out here. So because you guys are part of the crew, I'm going to show you the chart again to make sure that we are all briefed nicely. And let me... Let me open this one. So... We're going to come from here, overfly the field, left turn, 7000, right turn, configure probably on the very end part, and line up with the runway heading 223, and that's it. If we go missed, if there's something that we go and missed, let's say a go around, we need to do a go around. Of course, we're not going to be doing a go around over the runway. It's probably not going to be a very good idea. But if we're going to need to go around, I'll do a right turn and just proceed direct to this uh, village again, which is the November point, and then uh, start all over again. So yeah, that's that's reviewed. We're going to use flaps full, of course. The wind is light and variable. QNH is 1013, and I'm climbing as heck. So let's get down again. So this is the first valley. Give a little bit of view for the passengers. And let's recover the eight and a half thousand feet. If the rubber thing on the headphones letter, it will isolate sound very well. Oh, okay. Well, I would love to have uh, a headset in real life that would isolate the sound like this one does. Um, because my headset in the flight school, well, they're the cheapest one, um, not the cheapest ones, but one of the cheapest ones. They are decent, they're not bad, uh, but sometimes you get tired of hearing the Tecna noise, the Rotex engine. But I'm not willing to spend any more money, because I simply don't have it right now. And a good headset is very expensive. It's like the wind has changed here, or we're just catching some um, some thermals or whatever, because the airplane was perfectly stable and now it's climbing constantly. So, here we go. Alright, so this was the first valley that we needed to cross, and we're going to be turning inbound here. Courchevel should be somewhere there, and I might be wrong, but I think that's Mont Blanc or whatever that's called, like the White Mountain. Uh, very beautiful, I imagine, to see that in real life. All right, let's go start turn here to the right already, so we can cut over this mountain ridge a little bit. Let's do a bit of outside view. Absolutely lovely. Let's do it like this. A nice stadium there. And the airfield we just overflew should be right here. You can see it down there. It's probably a very interesting place to land as well. Alright, keep the turn. Coming. Maintain the eight and a half thousand. So far, flying with without autopilot, no problem. All right, looks good. Let's uh, turn on the sound. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> that's definitely loud. Can you guys hear me fine? 
Isn't it too loud? I can lower the volume of the sim a little bit like this, maybe. 10.8, let me memorize, it was 10.8. I'll lower it down to like maybe about here. Should be better for you guys. Is it good like this? Do you prefer, guys? Or uh, do I place the sound back? you should fly to Skardu in Pakistan. Is that one of the approaches that they do on the A320? Uh, like in the middle of the mountains? Because I recently saw a video about something like that and it was in Pakistan, I think. Lovely cockpit. I really like the uh, texturing work here on the cockpit. Look at this. Now that we get some sunlight in the avionics, looks really good. Oh, by the way, over temping a bit the engines there. It's my mistake. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we definitely need to do that. All right, five minutes to go to reach Courchevel, uh, which is definitely this place here. Uh, and we should be able to see the runway, which I kind of think. Yeah, it's definitely somewhere here. Probably it's obscured by this mountain, but it should be here. Outside view. Look at this. Look, this brown color with this livery looks absolutely fantastic. Love it. Absolutely love it. Sam Chui made a cool video about Spardu. Probably it's his video that I saw. Almost sure. Damn, that's amazing. What an amazing place to be. Alright, now let me lower the uh, range shooter on the Garmin just to make sure I'm flying to the correct spot a bit low on altitude let's recover that we were focused on the outside shots now there we go eight and a half so far so good Let's see, three zero, three two, that's set. Let's do pro checklist, 80 set, altimeter set, approach briefing confirmed. Good. All right, can I see the airport or not? Nope. Uh, no. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the runway. Maybe. I'll be flying straight ahead now. There we go, climbing again. Yeah, this is definitely some uh, thermal stuff. Or just uh, the mountain winds. Because the wind goes up and down because of the, uh, of the ridge. So that's definitely it. Alright, the views are absolutely astonishing. But we need to be focused now. I'm gonna lower the power a bit. So we're gonna fly a bit smoother. One thing I'll do, guys, which is not very realistic, but again, because I don't have a free hand to move my mouse and go, I'm gonna turn on the landing lights on already. And you guys are gonna allow me to do that because otherwise um, it's not as easy as just take out the uh, hand out of the yoke and switch on the lights. I mean, I could put a switch for the landing lights. Hmm, maybe I should do that. Alright, there's the field. We can see it. That is good. I'm going to start slowing down and lowering down. 
a bit. Let's go down to 8,000 first. Oh, that was a nice wind shear. Let's put a bit of uh, mixture forward. Props are good. Green the aircraft, flying good. Now shallow descent. I'll keep going down to uh, minus 500. Good luck. Thank you very much. I'll need it. I will absolutely need it. Wow, this is amazing. I just imagine flying here in real life must be so, so cool. Let's keep descending. Alright, so here's the field. I'm going to do a turn over the field so we can uh, kind of inspect what's going on there. Check. I had 3-2. Alright, so the field looks good. Empty. Runway is clear. That's very good. And whoa, that was a nice descent right there. And now I'm going to keep descending. Slowly put the power back. There's that town. Let's go flaps one. All right. There's that town. There's that mountain. So there is really not much space for a lot of turns here. A very tight space. Approaching 7,000. That was probably a bit of a not very soft descent, but that's okay. Let's go flaps 20, gear down. And now we're going to start the turn, which I find a bit late to do, but nevertheless, 30 degrees, power is good. Gear is down, 3 green. Should see the runway at any moment. We'll keep turning. And there's the runway. Perfect. Fantastic. Turned out to be better than, than I thought. Oof. Okay, we managed it. Perfect. Let's go. Flaps full. Props full forward. Alright, 90 knots. Stabilize the aircraft. Now, I really, really need to hit the right spot in the landing. I really need to do that. So I'm going to shut up and focus. Gear is down, flaps are full, mixture props are good, lights are on. Two hundred feet. Whew. I think that was a nice downdraft there at the very end. Oh my god. Oh shit. <laughs> my palms are sweating. Oof. All right. Oh my god. Oof. You know, making this on the stream makes it about 10 times more difficult. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god, my hands are completely wet. Ooh. All right, strobes are off. I'm above you. Right above you. Set the brakes. Trying to see you. Oh, 
Uh, no, that's not you. Right Whatever. The, uh, runway. Uh, I'm gonna be shutting down now for a moment. Calling flaps open. Landing lights off. This is all off. Switch off the avionics. Uh, nav lights off. Let's go cut to power. Magneto's off. Beacon off. Master off. Brake set, flaps up. That's good. Ooh, Jesus Christ. Let's leave the passengers. And let's watch Emil's landing. And we're going to watch our landing in the replay too, of course. Now, Volanta, don't close, don't close, don't close. Oof, okay. Volanta didn't close. The landing rate is crap, but that's expected. Because... Um, when there's a slope on the runway, it never works, so I will just ignore. Oh my god. Oh guys, that was that was intense. Alright, let's see, where's Emil? There's Emil. I see you. Good luck. The threshold is at six thousand and two hundred feet if that helps you. Six thousand two hundred and fifty. Mm, okay, thank you. Oh bye. That was maybe I will use it. But probably not. Well, that's a good reference. Yeah, probably you're right. If you're below that altitude, that means you're gonna crash into the threshold. Oh yeah, useful then. I'll oh. keep the air conditioning so I won't sweat that much. I feel like you're very high. But I'll shut up. Good luck. Everybody's wishing you good luck. Thank you. I'm good, I'm good. There we go. Yeah, Emil did it. <laughs> you are well, you, you are appearing under the ground for me, but that's okay. <laughs> that's the scenery. Um, yeah. Woo, Jesus, that was cool. We didn't end up like that guy um, on YouTube who crashed the plane. He landed very late. Oh my God, this was intense. Holy crap. All right, I'm going to watch my replay, guys, and we're going to continue. Emil, if you can uh, show you, uh, sh can you show uh, your replay too? My replay, uh, I will. Yep. On Discord, I can show you to yep, yep. to the people too. All right, so let's go. Let's let's watch our our re our landing here. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so first of all, let's let's watch this from a couple of views. First view is going to be the uh, the spot of view, whatever. I think there is a spot somewhere here. That people can see the whole runway and the plane landing. So let's let's start by watching from here. There's our little Seneca approaching. Oh boy. Well <laughs> that I don't know. I don't know if that's the replay or not, but that definitely felt a lot smoother. Than, uh, than, on the, than on the bloody replay. Let's see from this angle here. Uh, oh boy. Flare, flare, flare. Alright, that was... Uh, that was okay. Could be better. Could be worse. I'm happy. The the wing view on this one is probably fantastic. One, minus one, 132. Yeah, you know what Valenta said? I'm gonna tell you. Valenta said minus 538. <laughs> but you know what? I'll totally take that. I'll totally take that. I'll totally take that, because it's not easy to land here, absolutely not easy. And I'm way too um, fresh into the Seneca 
to be uh, comfortable landing in such places like this one, so that's all fine to me. Okay, let's go back to Vatsim. Connect. Maybe I will uh, show you my replay. Yep. Let me just open Discord. Yeah, it's on. And let me show the Discord to the people. So now everybody is watching your landing. So first of all, I guess I I had to fly almost horizontally and then land, but uh, I took like normal approach, uh, almost a uh, normal approach. But yeah. Okay, let's watch. Never mind Chris it. is saying if it was me, I'd I'd have just popped the serious caps. <laughs> No, you could have landed. Just use oh, the Shift right. 4 view because the Shift 4 is the better one. Uh, it gives the best uh, perspective. Or just yes. just show the same two that I showed you. Yeah. Oh, I lost the play. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, that was definitely a, a nice livery to blend with the scenery. Yeah. We need to start doing the world tour on the series. Oh boy. Nice. That was nice on the spot and it felt it even felt uh smoother than mine. Mine was like a a botch. Yeah, landing. Very cool. Well done. Now from the cockpit perspective, <laughs> which is um let's say not that's good. Speed. Yeah, the runway is very wide. Well, that was good. Ooh. It will be better oh, yeah. next time. Yeah, yeah, we got. We will definitely be uh, be returning here. All right, I'm switching off your stream now, and. Uh, so you will not continue, right? I won't continue yet. That's the end for me. Okay. Well, then I'm going to continue. Emil, thanks for coming anyways. That's been a pleasure. And it's very cool to see another aircraft arriving too at Courcheval. And well, I am going to continue. So if you're going to go, well then, goodbye. So I'm going to talk to you later. Right. A lot for the flight, and I wish you a nice flight to La. Yeah, La Mole, I guess. Saint Tropez, whatever. <laughs> okay. See you then. So, yeah. Bye. Bye. All right, so I can close the Discord call, and we're gonna continue with you guys. So first things first, we cannot refuel, so we're gonna check the fuel that we spent. We refueled forty-one gallons, if I recall correctly. So forty-one, we. Spent Spent six seven. We spent fourteen gallons. Fourteen and a half. No, fifteen. We spent fifteen gallons on this flight to Courchevel, which is all right. Uh, I am gonna assume that this is a very wealthy family that rented this aircraft, and they are very. They have a lot of stuff here, so we're gonna leave like very heavy out of here. So I don't know if you can see very well on the stream. Uh, but we're slightly above max landing weight, but because we're going to be burning fuel, that should be no problem. So here we go. We latched the doors. I think so. Yep, we latched. We closed on the back too. Let's go start a battery. Alternator on. Uh, do a quick check here. Fuel is good. Props are forward. This is all good. Good before start. Pocket brake set. Call flaps open. Alternate air off, prop levers full forward, beacon on, magnetos are on. Alright, good. Let's open the window here. Uh, whoops, sorry. Close this thing here, move the mixture forward. Alrighty, and let's give it a bit of priming. Alright, everybody's clear, clear prop. Hit the starter, monitor, oil pressure. Yeah, that's a good oil pressure right there. Alternator is working. Let's go to 1000 RPM. I forgot to add the power. 
There we go. And starting one. Oil pressure is good. Fantastic. All right, nav lights on. Avionics on. Now, because the engines are already pretty warm, we don't need to warm them up, uh, which is a good thing. And now I can just add the last airport we need to have here, which is Lima Foxtrot. Tango Zulu. Yeah, my mouse scroll wheel is done. Tango Zulu. La Mole. That's correct. We're gonna accept that one. That is said. Let's go transponder altitude. Is that on the test or not? Yeah, altitude. Lights are on. Strobes are on because we're very close to the runway. Clear all around us. We're gonna depart with flaps up, anyways. Let's just make sure that there's nobody else approaching. Oh, wow. Air France 747. Really? <laughs> Brakes check, by the way. Oh, come on. I wanted to see the aircraft. Anyways, let's go, guys. Let's go. Let's roll. After start, low pressure alternators are avionics checked. Before taxi, no theater, avionics, altimeter, flight controls check. Trim set. We need to set to trim for takeoff. That is set. And briefings complete. So basically, for the briefing, guys, very simple. We're gonna take off out of here, turn left into the valley, climb to uh, eleven and a half thousand. Use some oxygen, and then we're gonna just fly to the field. All right, don't want to clip the wing there. Do a nice lineup job. I can barely see. <laughs> I can tell that the Seneca position, sitting position, looks like the BMW seating position. All right, brakes set. Let's go both lights on, do a quick check here of the magnetos. Drop check. All right, this looks good. This looks good. Cal flaps is good. That's good. Perfect. We keep on idle. Gyro was good. And all strangers are working good. Back to 1000 RPM. Before take off, flaps up, light strobes, set transponder, set HS size. Good. Beetle heat off, mixture is good. All right. Let's go, let's go. November 861 Papa Alpha, the party in Courchevel. Spin the props. Last leg. This is good. Power set. These MPs are good, their speed is alive. Woo! This one <laughs> always feels funny. There we go, rotate. Positive climb, you're up. Airborne. Pitch to 100 knots. Torque is good. Or manifold pressure, should I say, not torque. Lights off. Yeah, that was definitely like a roller coaster. All right. Oh, that's downdraft. That's 100% a downdraft. I was pulling, and it was not responding very well. All right. Let's go. 35 manifold pressure. 2400 on the RPM. Lower a little bit. The mixture. Left turn. Goodbye, Courchevel. Oh, 
was a bit of a steep turn there. Skip climbing. We want 11 and a half. So we gotta get back to the valley from where we came from. And then from that valley we turn inbound to uh, uh, Saint Tropez Airport. Or maybe if we just let's maybe let's try to outclimb the uh, the mountains. How about that, guys? Let's try to outclimb and fly over the Alps. What's the Great Mora here? Thirteen and a half. So we gotta go like fourteen thousand, maybe thirteen thousand, fourteen point two. Yeah, we gotta go pretty high. I don't know, let's try. Let's try, why not? We're gonna try. We are definitely gonna try this one. Everything seems to be working fine. I'm gonna lower the props a bit more to 2300. And yeah, I still don't want to turn inbound. I want to get to the valley and then start the turn. Beautiful, guys. That was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So 14 and a half, let's go transition out, should set QNH 1013. QNH 1013 set, after takeoff, gear flaps, power, altimeters, lights, checked. Passing 8000. Yeah, the aircraft feels heavy. JTP, are we coming back to uh, to where? To Courchevel or to uh, Grenoble? No, we right now we're flying to Saint Tropez, and we're gonna end there. Uh, it's a beautiful little airport. I'm gonna cross a lot of the mountains here. Alright, there's the valley, I guess, or not. Three zero zero. No, I guess not. Valley, where's the valley? Maybe it's right there. But we are already high enough to cross the mountain right here. So at this moment, I'm just flying visually. Yeah, the valley should be right here. So let's just cross these mountains. If we're going to maintain a good climb rate out of here, should be fine. So everybody there in the back should have oxygen masks too, for the breathe, uh, to breathe. Nice drink there, that was totally unexpected. Beautiful. Do an extra direct too, just in case to clear the uh, the map. Uh, you know what? I would really love some VOR navigations. Very honestly, how about I just uh, switch on to the VOR or to some VOR?
how many miles is this? 145. Hmm. What's the frequency on the VOR here? 11555. Let's try. Mm, no, no luck here, probably because of the mountains. Right, here's the valley from where we came. Still climbing, approaching 10,000 feet. Looking good. So from this point on, we would need to uh, wear oxygen in case we would be on this altitude for a prolonged time. Uh, I just want to see if we start to experience some hypoxia stuff. So why don't we test that? And the GPS is going to be turning us that way there. So, because we are already very high, I'm going to start going that way there, or where we are a little bit lighter on the mountains. Oh, never mind. We wanted to outclimb the mountains, right? Yeah, we wanted to outclimb. Minimum altitude was 14.2, 14.7 there. All right, let's try 14.5. And we try to outclimb the mountains. Ten and a half. Still no hypoxia, which is correct, because at this altitude we'll not feel anything. Uh, I think the effects settle down starting like at 20 or 30 minutes, depending on your activity. There's a lot of high mountains there. Let's try, let's try. Let's see what happens. We did a good climb out of here. Just keep going. Feel is good, everything looks good, the temperatures are good. Cylinder head temperature is good too. Gonna explore a little bit the mountainous scenery. Just looks so good. Look at this livery with the brown scenery. Fantastic. The details of the rocks are so good as well. I love this. Alright, we are on the needle. So we need now to maintain this heading. I really like how the HSI is bouncing, you see there? That's very realistic. If you start bouncing the airplane, look at that. See, it starts bouncing too, left and right. Very cool. Alright, 11 and a half. And now, guys, remember I, I told you we will be talking a little bit about the power tables. What are the power tables right here? First of all, you can have the very basic checklists, too, in this spot. Let me just uh, try to maintain level flight, uh, which is the takeoff checklist and the landing checklist, which is always a good thing to have. And the power setting tables is basically a reference, uh, depending on what you want, uh, of your power setting. So here it depends on the standard altitude temperature, you have a correction there uh, in case you are warmer or, or colder, you have a thermometer right here in the back to check that. And finally, basically the percentage of the power, much like the Cirrus, 45, 55, 65 and 75 percent power. Oh boy, we are deviating from that heading. That's a little bit different, difficult to <laughs> to talk and to show you guys this. But yeah, let's say we will be cruising at fourteen and a half thousand. So we're going to be using the altitude of fourteen thousand uh, right there. 
and we want to go with 55% power. Approximate fuel burn is 18 gallons per hour, uh, which is fairly good. That means we're going to arrive with about 20 gallons of fuel. That gives us an extra of one hour. Um, or we could just go with the 16.1, which is a 45% power, which is even better. So maybe that one uh, feels even better. So let's say 14,000 at 2200 RPM, our manifold pressure should be at 21 to achieve this, uh, these values. So we're going to see, and I'm 100% sure that's exactly what is going to uh, happen. We're going to see how it's going to go. All right, 12 and a half. Let's keep climbing. I added a bit of power there to uh, to get ourselves higher up. Ground speed is 147 knots. Not bad. Not bad. Scenery is amazing. Just look at this. That's bloody brilliant. Look at that. Oh my god. That looks so good. All right. We're getting hit by a bit of turbulence. That's the annoying part though. Uh 13 and a half. You see no hypoxia effect yes yet. Uh just want to check. No, we have no indication that we need to wear the oxygen on the series you have that little indication there. Oh, actually getting darker? Is it? I feel like the view is getting darker. Yeah, the view is definitely getting darker. So, we are getting hypoxia. Awesome. Alright. <laughs> I mean, not the thing to say awesome, but let's wear our oxygen mask. Oh, and there we go. The view fixed. Good. So, the hypoxia effect works. And that's very cool. So let's keep climbing to 14,500. Here we are. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to go slightly there to... Is that where I don't have the scenery? Yeah. Rip. So let's go here to the left. Man, the mountains look so good. Look at this. Just just look at it. Amazing. I'm taking screenshots in the meanwhile because I mean it's just so good. It is just too good. And we should be hitting 14 and a half. Yep. We are very nice. I'm gonna fly right there for the moment. I'm gonna level off to 14 and a half and then keep flying. Speed up 44 minutes, estimated time in route, but it's gonna be less than that because we're gonna accelerate in a bit. There we go. Nice and easy on the level off. Reduce the manifold pressure. Let's go 30 to start with, reduce the RPM, 2200, reduce the fuel flow. And now let the aircraft stabilize itself a little bit. Now what was the setting there? 21, 2200 RPM. So let's set. 25 or about 25 
Now just don't get down, please. Fly the airplane. Yeah, it's not very useful to have the gadgets down there for the engines, for the engine parameters, but whatever. Let's go with 30. 25, 25, 26. I want 26 or 10 gallons per hour. That's what I want. And we need to trim the aircraft properly. For this, I need to add power again. Climb out. Otherwise, we're just spending energy. There we go. Now the level off. 10 gallons per hour. Trim the aircraft. There we go. You good? Nope, still descending. You good now? Yeah, this looks about right. I can lean the fuel just a little bit more. And I can now close the cowling flaps. Perfect. So, we are spanning around 20 gallons per hour. 44 minutes into the flight. So yeah, after all, it's going to be 44 minutes. That's all, all right. And now we're getting an upwind. Beautiful scenery. Yeah, see there? That was a that was a thermal. So it looks like we're gonna be having to fight a bit the aircraft. That's alright. Maintain slightly left of course because there is very high mountains there. And I wanna check how's the oxygen level on the bottle too. So now I need to trim down the aircraft before I was trimming it up. And now I need to trim it down. Oh, see there? That was a drop. Now I'm pulling back on the sink. There we go. Let's check the outside a bit. Very nice. Yeah, uh, that's the scenery that I don't have. Rip. Need to regenerate that orto. It's left of Lima Fox Road. Whatever, I can remember this. Let me just redo here the uh, direct enter. 38 minutes, good. Very high mounts. No wonder the Great Mora is so high. So guys, what do you think of the Seneca? 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 I don't know uh, how to pronounce it correctly. I really like it. The hand flying is great. The modeling is good. The sounds are good. The walk around option is very nice too. The support has been great. I think Captain Iceman has done a fantastic job. Cooler is saying need to get it at some point. You bet. And it's not even that expensive. Uh, I mean, it's not expensive at all. And I think it's a, there's a discount running right now. Uh, you can check. It. I've put the link down in the description below. All 
Right, looks like we've crossed the taller mountains. Uh, almost. Yeah, kind of. This is the Alps photo real scenery, and this is the Google scenery that I have. There is another <laughs> thermal. Get back to our altitude. What do you guys think? Are the passengers sick in the back? Or not? Or not yet? <laughs> Ground speed, 175, not bad. Nice tailwind that we have here. And speaking of Saint-Tropez, so uh, we can basically land from both sides, but we need to pay attention because there is a mountain in front of one of the runways I think I'm going to try to uh, give a little bit of a briefing with you guys. So I'm just thinking, how could I do that? Because it's really unstable air up here. Probably gusting winds or something. Because I really need to maintain my hand on the stick to keep flying where, where I need to fly. So let me try and do something here. I'm going to try to improvise. Uh, you should be able to see the screen now. And this is basically the airport. Uh, but what you don't see here is that there is a very big mountain on... I mean, not a big mountain, but a decent mountain on this side of runway 06. So you either come from 2-4 and land, or you come from a very... I mean, for, from a slightly offset angle to runway 06. Uh, and I would honestly prefer to take runway 06 just because it's more interesting uh, with the offset and then just go for the straight in 24. Uh, we're gonna be doing a visual approach and uh, I want to go here to sky vector zoom in that's another pull yeah basically see there this is the terrain line how is it shaped so you either go through a valley here or you have to go on an offset angle and then line up with the runway at the very end which I find as the most interesting stuff so maybe we're gonna do this one we're gonna see how are the winds but that's basically the briefing for now let's check if we spent a lot of the oxygen yeah we definitely spent some remember we this was at the full right there with the needle so Cool. Also, I don't know if Captain Iceman is there, but is the oxygen level uh, dependent on the number of passengers, as it should be? Or it's not at the moment? Yeah, these mountains here uh, have a more of a greenish tone, but I like them anyways. They look good. And we probably will require an overfly of the field just so I practice a little bit because I never been there. It's in the middle uh, of the uh, mountains. I mean, not the mountains. It's like it has some terrain around, but it's not super critical. Flight vision. Let the passengers sleep. <laughs> I remember. I think the, there is a meme uh, running around. Uh, regarding the Taylor Swift uh, fans uh, and uh, it said something like uh, when you're when you're bringing a plane full of Swifties and then the picture it's uh, of a 737 overhead panel and basically the guy puts the uh, pressurization switch to manual and on open <laughs> so yeah I, I probably could do that <laughs> but not so sure. Let's see if I pull the mask out. How quick will the uh, hypoxia effect start to appear again? Oh, I already see it. It's getting dark. It's getting dark. Alright, let's get the mask back. Ooh. Oh, 
Oh, this one is taking longer to recover. Oh, this one is interesting. There we go. Now we're recovered. V1 Rotate Fly. Hey, yo. Late arrival to the stream. Looking forward to replay the flight as I'm interested in the airplane lately. Oh, Jesus. That was a bit of a... Uh, sorry. A bit of turbulence. Uh, uh, looking forward to replay the flight as I'm interested in the airplane. Lately, I have been running S-11 in my old add-ons for change. Yeah. Well, this is a beautiful aircraft. Very nicely modeled. Beautiful to hand fly. We even have a rule on this on this stream: no autopilot. So we have done two landings so far. One of which was in Porsche Um and I didn't use autopilot yet. And I'm not going to be using it because uh, I, it's broken. I don't know. <laughs> the autopilot is not functioning. It is on the plane. Okay, it, it works fine. It's just that uh, I decided to. Uh, to imagine that it's not working for some reason and that's why I'm flying manually and because this airplane is just feels great to fly on, on just manually uh, we're just getting through some rough air here in the mountains it's not terrible but uh, it's definitely either gusting or just because of the terrain um, feeling some bumps some lefts and rights but that's okay and we are doing our final leg, which is going, uh, which is to Saint Tropez. We took off from Chambéry. We are taking a full load of passengers, full baggage, like full cargo, completely, uh, because they had a beautiful trip to Chambéry, and they uh, they rented, not not rented, uh, they uh, called our services to bring the whole family back to. Uh, Saint Tropez, Jesus, for some more uh, family trips. <laughs> I don't know. I like to give mini stories for the flights that we do. It make it it brings a purpose uh, to the flight, even though it's very I don't know very simple purpose. It's still cool. And I think Saint Tropez is a touristic place to uh, to visit. Hands off the yoke, let's see how long will it take to destabilize. No, not long. Maybe I need to trim it nose down a bit more. Let's try. I'm gonna give it a few clicks on the nose down, but it's definitely more calm now than it was before near the high terrain. <laughs> hands off the yoke or the stick in my case because I have a joystick nope still going up a couple more clicks let's see if this does the job hands off mm. I'll let it go I didn't touch it yet. Not touching it yet. Let's see where that vertical speed goes. I'm not touching. It's just flying. Look at this. This is what I love about this aircraft. You can just hand fly this for... I don't know. We're flying already for like 15 minutes, this leg. And it's good. I'm not touched. I have not touched it yet. I'm going to tell you when I touch it. Still haven't touched it. All right, I'm gonna correct with the ailerons just a bit. Yeah, right now I'm gonna do it a bit to the right. This, and I'm not touching it again. Ah, got some Geneva control there. Oh, by the way, let's add a couple of screenshots. Why not? To Valenta. This one is lovely. This one is lovely, and. This one is lovely. So I have not touched the controls yet again. It's running good. We're slightly climbing, so I'm gonna do a little gentle pull on the nose down. Do a couple, maybe like two clicks nose down. Level with the ailerons. Let's see 
if we if it will stabilize itself. Not touching the controls again. Scroll this one to the north. 25 minutes to go. Fuel is looking good. All the temperatures are looking good. Fantastic. Oh, that, that's climbing quite a bit there. Yeah, I'm going to correct that. But I feel, I felt like that was some sort of a gust, see? Because now we're getting a... Uh, what gets you up gets you down. So I'm going to control this rate of descent. Should we organize the Seneca to group flight for the public public release? But, but it's already released. I mean, you can already buy it. Uh, but I would totally go into that and do a group flight. Uh, I want to take this aircraft to Lukla, too. Because, you know, guys, I made that poll regarding the Chambéry and Lukla. Um, basically, the votes were 50-50, which is amazing. Um, so I took Chambéry for a single reason. The weather in Lukla right now is bad. Like, really bad. It was snowing, low visibility and stuff. Even though in Kathmandu it was good. But in Lukla it was no good. And in the middle of the mountains, it, I, I feel like that one is slightly... I mean... It's not terrible, but at the same time, it's slightly worse than Courchevel because um, it's a very tight space and it is higher because the airport sits at nine and a half thousand feet, if I recall correctly, or nine nine thousand and one hundred. Maybe that's the threshold. Maybe that's why I have the the two values, but. Um, if you guys want, we can try to go to Lukla as a group flight, and the interesting part will be the rotation in Lukla. I don't know if you guys spotted the real life videos, but it is amazing. Like in a eight minutes time period, you can have four airplanes landing, deboarding, loading up with passengers, and taking off again. Like eight. Okay, I'm gonna tell it's all ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, in ten minutes, you have four aircrafts landing deboarding passengers, boarding again, and departing. I think that's amazing. And if we could try to get something like that in a group flight, if we would be, say, Emil comes, Mike comes, and two more guys come, or three more people come, uh, I mean, that would be amazing. And yeah, I definitely need that tile. You see, I had a problem with Orto 4 XP for some reason, um, and I'm not touching the controls right now. I'm going to see how we come back. And for some reason, I lost all elevation data, and this happens, which, uh, which is very sad, because it's one of the uh, most mountainous regions of France. So I had to ask Mike and Emil to send me the tiles, and they did so. Like... Uh, 15 or 16 tiles, which is not at all funny to do, but they did that. So I'm very thankful to Mike, especially. Ah, look, the airplane is stable. I didn't touch the controls all this time. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Porto 4 XP in this area of France and Italy. Uh, but yeah, it's everything flat. Not touching the controls. This is what I love. I mean, it's even bouncing a bit from the turbulence, but it is still flying stable. Amazing stuff. 22 minutes to go. Ground speed is good. Fuel is good. Two. We should be below max landing weight, because if you guys can remember, we loaded so much weight. Yeah, we are below max now. We have 26.1 uh, gallons now which is totally fine pretty heavy and still some oxygen there oh no I moved the rudder no <laughs> really didn't want to do that but yeah group flight would be totally great to uh, to organize 
Or you know what, maybe luckily it's not the best airport because it only has four spots. Maybe for a group flight that would be a bit... A bit... Uh, a bit stressful. Mm, but yeah. You know, in Mexico, because Captain Iceman is from Mexico, we could do the group flight in Mexico. There is so much beautiful scenery in Mexico, it's such a nice place. We definitely could go there. Yeah, I'm gonna think about it. I'm also thinking about streaming tomorrow again. Uh, maybe if the weather is better, we try to go to Lakla. Mm, but I'm not sure. We're gonna see. Well, so far so good. How is the Valenta profile looking? Not bad. Mexico would be a good idea. Maybe two to three thirty minutes hops or so. Yeah, I'm gonna talk with uh, Captain Iceman because uh, he's gonna have good suggestions for such flights. I am one hundred percent sure, and then I will announce those, and everybody can come in. It's gonna be the Seneca flight, group flight. Very cool. I really like how is it going, the flight. I feel like that's uh, that's water right there. That's the sea. And that means we're not that far off from our destination. Let me try to see, can I get to the METAR, which, which is the code, Lima Fox or Tango Zulu, Wind Lion Variable QNH 1024, perfect, oh, okay, so this is very good, this means we can take the difficult runway that I wanted to take, so, yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, what I what are my computer specs, uh, easiest way to, to uh, to answer that question is by doing this. Here's my CPU AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series. 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, I can't remember the speed of this one. Ah, yeah, so here it is 3200 megahertz. Uh, I have uh, one 1000 uh, gigabyte or one terabyte. No, never mind. One terabyte HDD. One six terabytes HDD, which uh, gives you a useful of 5.5 terabytes. I keep my ortos here. Uh, one SSD for the operating system, uh, 501, and my GPU is the GeForce RTX 2070. That's good. That's basically it. Oh, you're buying a PC. That's great. Congrats. That's very very cool. That must feel fantastic. Get Captain Iceman to come along as a tour guide. Oh, yeah, that would be very cool, actually. Why not? You know, I, I think the only problem with that one is there is not a good model uh, for the Piper Seneca uh, for Vatsim. Like, there is literally no model. Uh, so we are going to be seeing each other as barons. <laughs> which is a little bit annoying but yeah all right let's see the outside shot we were near that mountain when we departed yeah I really like how this looks lovely livery So do you guys think this this pasture is less scared? Yeah, she looks less scared, definitely. I'm not touching the controls again. Yeah, lovely airplane, absolutely lovely. So, so good. Next pilot, you are a Navajo for me, not too bad. Flight Fusion, are you flying to? 
are you flying two at this moment? N near? Uh, shitty pilol, I'm buying similar one but with less RAM and 2060 Super. That's a good one. That's a good one too. Cooler, after a successful landing in Courchevel, I am less scared now. <laughs> I am less scared too. <laughs> <laughs> you know the pilot is less scared too absolutely less scared look at this engine it just looks uh, I don't know fantastic and I love the little details right there like from the engine uh, it's just I don't know it looks so good Look, all this time I'm not touching the controls and the only thing that we need to fix is the heading. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yes, but only in observer mode. Uh, and I need to... Oh, Jesus, how can I, uh, how can I move the chat? So, us. Uh, only on server mode. So far I am contemplating if I should log on for real. Why not? Absolutely, you should. You should join it. Uh, join the flights, of course. Why not? It's always good. It's always very cool. 15 minutes to go. 14,000. So, how about this? We try to save some fuel. And I start a descent on a minus 500 descent rate. How about that? Let's try. Let's try and do that. Let's go pull a little bit the power down. let the airplane start to sink now I'm gonna trim those up a bit yeah minus 700 I like this one 20 inches of manifold pressure right here I'm gonna add a bit of mixture We started our descent slowly into Saint Tropez. 40 miles to go. Speed is good. Descent is good. And we are saving a bit of fuel because our uh, fuel burn has gone down from 10 gallons per engine to about 7, I would say. So we're now burning 14 gallons instead of 20, which is always a good thing. You think I can pull at least 30 on Zebo or Dash 8? Is that the Dash 8 Q400? What do you mean you can pull at least 30? That's the only thing I didn't get. I am in, on your 5 o'clock now, I am joining you to La Mole. Yeah, 5 o'clock, let's, let's see, where are you? 5 o'clock, uh, let me check the map, alright, you're right behind me then, Oop. there you go, I see you, are you flying to Seneca too? Ah, frame rate, uh, yes, you can, uh, I'm 100% sure. So I see you as a Baron, but that's that's fine. That's just ex-pilot stuff. Awesome. I don't care if that's a Baron. Still looks like a Piper Seneca, so this is a Seneca flight right now. <laughs> Good. So minus 500, 12 and something minutes to go. I should go lower. ShayTP, speaking about frame rates. Uh, yes, get this plug in here. So, uh, come on. 3J FPS, best plugin ever for frame rate, frame rate control. I just hit the maximum frame rate and it works. I can hit the maximum quality or I can hit the auto, which is a good uh, medium, whatever it thinks. You can customize a lot of stuff here. I just use the maximum frame rate and it works the best uh, without a lot of visual losses. And yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do that. All right, I'm thinking about lowering even more because we are just about to pass 12 and a half and we have 12 minutes to go. So 
Let's lower the power even more to a minus 1000 descent rate. A bit of a click spot uh, correction, a bit of uh, some clicks on the trim nose up. And let the aircraft stabilize. So I really want to do an overfly of the field to make sure that I check it first before I go there. I used that on X Plane 11. I remember this. Yeah, I used it too on X Plane 11. It's very, it's a very good plugin. Totally worth it. All right, now we're doing a very good descent. I really love this. I'm basically flying with two fingers at this moment on the stick. Super nice aircraft totally worth it now I need some roll trim keep ourselves on heading it's getting slightly more turbulent uh, flight vision. If you want, you want to go. Uh, you can call. Uh, Jesus Christ! Sorry, my English is a bit trash today. Flight vision. If you want, you can go ahead and land first because I will be do do doing the um, flyover just to make sure that uh, I get the approach right because I have never flown to Saint Tropez. And so, yeah, if you if you feel more comfortable, you can go and. Land first, I'll be second. That looks like a mine, and it probably is. And Saint Tropez is exactly somewhere in the middle of these mountains, so this is what I was meaning as mountains or terrain or whatever you would like. 10 minutes to go, we are 11,000. Can I take off the oxygen mask now? Still have plenty of oxygen. Let's see if we start to see the hypoxy effect. Doesn't look like it so far. Good. All the temperatures are good. Still have plenty of fuel. Still haven't used the autopilot. This is what I challenge you guys to do, is just some manual flying, learn how to trim properly. There's some traffic there in the, in the sky, probably very boring on autopilot, sitting there just monitoring the instruments. Uh, nothing to do, you don't need to, find, to fight any wind gusts or uh, thermals or downdrafts or updrafts. You just sit there and autopilot does everything for you. Ah, boring. <laughs> right, nine and a half minutes to go. We are just crossing, almost crossing 10,000 feet, which is good. Let's check again the um, the weather here. 1025 checked. Let me see if I can find something regarding the um, transition altitude there. And close the charts for Grenoble for uh, Percheval and Saint Tropez. This is the only one I want to see. How about I open some SID chart? All right, transition altitude is 5,000, so we're going to assume transition level is going to be 660, six okay? V1 rotate fly, I replayed your landing in Courchevel. What are you using for scenery there? Art of plus Sim Heaven, the mesh looks so good, good, so very good, good, and accurate slope of the runway. Yes, basically, uh, I spent a lot of time searching for a good, alt uh, for a good option for Courchevel. And the only free option is the flyaway uh, Alps Sky Scenery. Scenery? I think that's something like that called. Uh, by the way, yeah, Flyaway Simulations website, they have a free freeware, a 
freeware with a disclaimer, uh, which is, um, well, it's six styles of orto scenery with corrected meshes. That's why the runway looks good. It weights 40 gigs, uh, 40 gigabytes, and you can download it for free, but with a speed limitation of 200 kilobytes per second. So it's going to take you ages. So can you tell that it's free? Yes, it is, but um, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> you see, I, I paid the $5 subscription. Uh, for one month only, just to download the, the scenery, and I did that, uh, and it's totally worth it. They have other sceneries there, like the Grand Canyon, I can't remember, I think Chris uh, told that he has the Grand Canyon and the San Francisco VFR sceneries, uh, Orto sceneries, sorry, not VFR, and so they are worth it. I mean, yeah, for the work they did there, I think it's worth it. So you could do it. Uh, let me just do a direct to here again. So 17 miles out. Point Vision finally found the VFR charts. I'll join the downwinds or six. Where did you find the VFR charts? Because I, I tried to find it on the AIP and the only thing I get there is... is the bloody uh, IFR charts, which is extremely annoying. Oh, I'm just thinking now, maybe that's because they have separated VFR and IFR charts, but that makes no sense still. In Portugal, they, they do have a separated IFR and VFR website uh, for all the airfields, which is extremely annoying. I searched AIP LFTZ and found a link VA charts. Ha, huh, okay. All right, that's cool. Well, I'm gonna just stick with the visual right now. I kind of know how the terrain is. I'm gonna go 14 miles to go. This is five minutes and 45 seconds. MSA is 3,800 from 0.72 to 1.37, then in 20 miles from where we are going, it's 6,200 and 3,300 on the rest. Sounds good to me. So I will probably maintain 3,800, do an overfly and then do the visual approach. We are... Awesome. That's flight vision, I guess. Good edge one zero one five. Uh, one zero two five. One zero two five. Let's go one zero two five. One zero two five is set. And. Normal traffic, November 861, Papa Alpha is 11 miles to the north. He's going to be doing an overfly and then joining the uh, left downwind for runway 06, Lemol traffic. All right, very good. So how is the fuel going? Good, fuel is good. We're saving a ton of it. Q&H is set, altitude is good. Fantastic. Four minutes to go. We are at 6,000. Adding a bit of power there on the manifold pressure. So we get back to the minus 500 feet uh, rate of descent. Probably would do a little PA to the passengers. That's uh, well, we are doing our arrival, as you can see, we have already descended to quite a bit. And, oh, there's a nice airfield right there. Um, and so please make sure that your seatbelt is fastened. It probably will be, because, well, <laughs> it was pretty turbulent there in the mountains. So, yeah, we're, we are approaching, definitely. And I'm going to start to look out for the airfield.
three minutes to go. We have a VOR2 in case we need it. And it will be a small valley with the airfield, which should be right there. Uh, yep, there it is. So, runway 06, we're gonna have to come all the way from here. And be really close to this mountain here to line up. Let's do the turn anyways. Five and a half thousand, looks good. I uh, just want to make sure that I won't come into the way of flight vision. No, he's a beam of me. That's good. Can I visually confirm that? That would be great. I can't see him. Mm, no. Can't see him. By the way, the scenery is looking good. Very good. Right, manifold pressure is good. Approaching 5,000. Overfly the field. I guess it's better if you go number one. Uh, I'll do the circle. Uh, I'll overfly the field, do a circle to the left, and then I'll be flying like this way here into the valley, and then I'll be landing. Or I could just do to the right. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But I want to overfly the field so I can analyze the scenery a little bit. Yeah, the engine cowling here, really big. <laughs> Not very useful to see outside. Uh, but flight vision, if you're gonna go... Check, so he's low. He is very low, and I'm very high. Uh, perfect, that means we are not in a conflict. I'd love to see him, though. I like to have the traffic in sight, you know. Alright, past 5,000, looking good. It's only continuing the descent. And you know what? Probably going, doing the turn through the right be not a very good idea, because uh, the runway will be obscured by the terrain. So, we're going to be maintaining ourselves on this side of the field. All right. Uh, trying to see him. I don't know. Sun is setting. Look at this plane with a slivery. Isn't it looking amazing? It is. It absolutely is. What a fantastic job. I'm taking screenshots all the time. Alright, perfect. This is what I wanted to see. So, four and a half thousand, let's start our left turn. Yeah, so the terrain is actually pretty steep there. Actually pretty steep. And as we started the turn, we need to make sure that we don't bust four thousand feet. All right, I feel like I did a good overfly and I made a good analysis. Last thing I want to check is the terrain on this side here, because we will be doing the approach from that side. Awesome, so he's doing the base turn, he should be right behind, uh, beneath us. I don't know, Xpod is not showing me anything. Yeah, he should be right be below us. Huh? This is really annoying. Alright. Alright, let's now start descending to 3800, which is right here. Level off. Add a bit of power. Let's do 25 on the manifold pressure. This looks good. Airplane is stable. Let's 
so airfield elevation is 63 feet so really low we're very high now let's start to turn and let's start to lose some altitude lower the manifold pressure oh I see him finally there he is Ooh. I see him you guys can see him? I hope the stream does show that. Oh boy. Where are we going, Kamikaze? <laughs> I was so excited for him. There he is! Look! Nice! Finally. Alright, focus now. <laughs> and I'm going to be joining the valley right there. So let's pull the powers back. I'm going to switch on the lights again now. to turn have decreased plenty of speed flaps one or flaps ten should I say Lamol traffic November 861 Papa Alpha is base turn uh, runway 06. Is it 06? Yes, it is. Alright, let's keep ourselves going down. Your Grand Canyon San Francisco Syria are very nice too. Yeah, that's it, Chris. Let's go gear down. Top 20. Let's go full props, full mixture, and flaps full. Flaps gear is down, props and mixture are good. I'm old traffic, November 861 Papa Alpha on final runway 06. Minus, 80, uh, minus 76 shtp, that's a low value right there. Yeah, I'm not going stable right now, I'm just descending. <laughs> I'm having fun. Sometimes you have to have a little bit of fun. There we go, start to add a bit of power. Perfect. Oh, that was a bounce. And a touchdown. Laps up. Slowly break. Welcome to St. Tropez, guys. After a full, full flight on with, I mean, three full flights with autopilot. And we can't go there, we have to go back. Let's turn ourselves around. We have no auto traffic. Yeah, we have no auto traffic. Perfect, let's go, call flaps open. One goes off. Ooh, this was nice. This was nice. Sunset color is starting to appear on the aircraft. Oh boy. This was fun, guys. This was great. This was really great, great stream. I'm gonna watch the replay and end there. Just wanna park near Flight Vision. Challenging approach, very nice. Yeah, it was. You know, going minus 1500 at the very end there. 
I mean, I probably we could have gone a lot more stable if I would go all the way from there. But that would be boring, right? Yeah, approaching golden hour. Ah, there's the Baron. I'm gonna park next to him. I hope there is a place to land uh, to park there. Yes, there is. Good. I can't see the exit. There's the exit. Nice and easy. Clear right. Clear left. Good transponder to stand by. Make sure we don't clip the wing. And let's do a turn here. Just a bit more forward. That's good. Alright, brakes set, strobe lights off. Uh, nav light off. Landing light off, avionics, transponder off, avionics off, we only have the beacon on now, let's go cut the engines, Be uh, magnetos off, beacon light off, alternators off, and battery off, fantastic. Well, the passengers will be happy. Well, Vision, thanks for the motivation. That was great. You're welcome. I mean, I think you did a fantastic job. Your communication was on point. And that was really, really great. Now, only thing I have to do is finish the flight on Volanta. JTP, what was your guessing? Minus 76. Huh, you were not that far off. Uh, I'm going to end the flight, review the flight, and I'm going to show you Valanta, and finally, uh, and of course, we need to take a picture on the outside with flight vision for the memory, screenshot done, and Valanta, yep, I need to show you this, guys, here it is, so, let's see, first flight, out of Chambéry to Grenoble, Landing was minus 19, not bad. Into the terminal, pick our first load of passengers, then off to Porchevel, where we did this kind of nice approach. It was not that bad, though. And the landing was was uh, was funny, minus 538. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. And here's our manual flight all the way to St. Tropez, where we landed minus 71. Not bad. I mean, I'll take it. Here's my manual flying skills. Not bad with the altitude, I must say. Look at this. This looks almost autopilot. And this continuous descent, too. Wow. Okay. I'm super happy with this plane, guys. And if you're thinking about getting it, absolutely do. Now, uh, what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, replay time, right? Replay, and then we do after securing the aircraft. Oh no, I think I crashed my explain. No. <laughs> oh no, I think it's gone. All right, yeah, explain is gone. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine, guys. Uh, let me just open it again so you can see something. Well, Chris, it'd be great if you could do a Total Mexico stream in the future. I will. I will, I will, I will. I will absolutely do it. Uh, absolutely will do it. 100% sure. Uh, and yeah, that is it. Guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this stream on the Piper Seneca Captain Iceman series. PA-34-200 turbo version into Courchevel. This was... Uh, this was great. This was very fun. Um, and I hope you guys, I don't know, just enjoyed the plane. Um, I hope I'm not skipping any frames because X-Plane is loading. 
but yeah, thank you everybody for the support. Uh, and we're going to see you on the next, on the next video, next live.